Hello everyone, I'm Love here back again with another Awakening Chaos Era video. So in today's video, I'll be creating a guide on the new legendary hero, Otome, who is currently available in the limited summon. And at the point of this video recording, you will be you have around about 9 days and 20 hours to summon her. Alright, so in this video, I'll be going over her character design, character animation, her stats, builds, the recommended gears and so forth, and then I'll a summary on how you can use her and then i'll be showcasing her in the guild boss so without further ado let's get started all right so this is Matome with her character animation where she swings her golden whip to slash her enemies and let's take a tour 360 degrees of her character design so she's currently uh wearing a leather suit which is very tight fit and it has a blue white and black team and this blends really well with her hair color which is white and then her weapon she's building is a whip there's some that looks uh the header looks like a candle container or some sort like that that holds the candle but this one is holding the whip itself i'm not sure whether the whip is metal or golden metal plate because it seems that it has some electric you know sparkling around it so maybe this one is like a metal whip braided in gold and that's how she deals massive amount of damage to the, her enemies and yeah and she also has these silver rings around her hands maybe it's to protect her against the enemies and do and it looks similar to her shoes her shoes her high heel shoes have these spikes that matches with her gauntlet here and yeah so basically I'm not sure why the developers put this cat woman in the Titan Iceland because I was like having the impression that this Titan Iceland is mainly where the dwarf uh, resides. So probably maybe it's the white leopard uh, residing in the Iceland or something like that. Alright, so this is our first like humanoid. Is it first humanoid uh, in Titan Iceland? Maybe there are a few. And yeah, so that's her character design. Looks really amazing. Uh, let's check out her stats here. She has an S rating for attack, A rating for critical rate, and B rating across the health, defense, and speed. So basically, she's a damage dealer based from her, but just by looking at her stats here. And let's quickly go through her abilities to find out what, uh, how, uh, find out what she does, and from there we can create a use case out of her skills here. So let's start off with a trait known as the Blood Curse. And this blood curse is providing an aura when a team member applies bleeding, increases the effect duration by one round. And when an ally applies bleeding with active attacks, has a 50% chance to launch a joint attack with the basic ability. So what this means is whenever the heroes apply bleed with, with, with their abilities, Martome will be able to perform a joint attack. And once she is ascended to the 5th ascension, this 50% chance will be a guaranteed chance at 100% to launch a joint attack which allows her to ramp up the bleeds on the enemy quickly. And if in for the aura right, any bleed that is applied will increase by one round. So let's say if, if a Scarlet, another epic hero who is able to apply bleed through with a wolf, whenever the wolf applies the bleed right, it will also increase that uh, bleed and debuff duration. Which uh, pairs really well with all bleed heroes like Barclay, Elmar, Ikasa, Scarlet. Alright, let's move on to a basic. This basic ability is known as the Blood Impact. It deals 100% damage to one enemy and applies one stack of bleeding to them for two rounds. If there are no other enemies, additionally applies one stack of bleeding for two rounds. So based from the description alone, right? Uh, she's uh, mainly, I think mainly used for the boss itself when there's no sidekicks around so let's say if you're using her for the keep versus environment where there's only the hurricane ruler without the hurricane birds then she'll be able to quickly stack up a lot of bleeds on the enemy same goes with all other bosses in the dungeon like what's that called uh, like the light tower dashmir the fire in boss the what the what's it called fire imps uh? But ah uh, yeah, I just realized the Ash Magistra will summon seven fire imps around him. So this this means that she will not be able to apply more stacks of bleeding. So 
This means that she's not really great in the Ash Magistra based from this, this condition here. Okay, so basically bleeding is a debuff that deals true damage equal to the applies attack stats. Uh, true damage ignores the enemy's defense, but the uh, weakness is uh, the downside is it does not uh, apply critical, critical damage like ignite. So that's one thing that you need to take note of. So in order to deal more damage, just stack up a lot of attack stats like attack ring, attack percentage rather than critical damage. And then for her special ability known as the Vampiric Desire, this passive ability on active attacks, if the target has more than 6 stacks of bleeding, you will activate a Crimson Whip special ability up to 1 times per round. So this Crimson Whip is her special ability that allows her to deal 150% damage to one enemy. Uh, removes one positive effect on them and, re and reduces the ultimate ability cooldown by one turn. So this one makes her somewhat useful in some areas in the game that that has uh, where the boss applies positive effect on themselves. Next will be her Fatal Whip ultimate ability that has a 4 turn skill cooldown that allows her to deal 200% damage to one enemy and applies 2 stacks of bleeding to them for 2 rounds and detonates all bleeding stacks on them. If there are no enemies left, the bleeding stacks will not be removed after detonation. So let's summarize her abilities. The BC Martome have a limitation or condition on both her basic ability as well as her ultimate ability where there are where there's enemies, then should not should be able to you know should not be able to do something. So for instance, if there's enemies, then she will not be able to apply additional stack. For her basic, and if there are if there are enemies on the battlefield, uh, at least uh, two or more, then she'll be able to remove all, all of those bleeding stacks, which means that she's not really useful in or uh, she's not really optimized for the regular arcane dominated dungeon speed farming, such as like the Ash Magistra Fire Imps, as well as like Queen of Tides that has uh, two side kicks to protect her. As, and also, yeah, I think these are the two areas that blue he uh, water heroes are used to to speed farm those dungeons. And and usually for bleed heroes as well as the ignite heroes, they re they are dependent on another hero to allow them to shine. So for instance, right, if you were to take a look on all of her abilities, there's a condition where I think her special ability here. Vampiric Desire. So she needs to have at least 6 stacks of bleeding in order to launch an additional attack with her special ability here. So she needs to pair with another hero like Scarlet to apply more bleeds. Then she'll be able to do even more damage. I think Scarlet alone will not be sufficient. You need to pair another hero to, to quickly ramp up the, the bleed debuff. Like Eren, Eren is a good pair with uh, Martome because whenever Eren performs the ally joint attack with his ultimate ability, that will quickly put up even more bleed uh, debuff to quickly reach the 6 type of bleeding in order to launch another bonus attack here, which ultimately reduces our ultimate uh, cooldown quickly. And yeah, so basically, although she can be quite powerful. But in order for her to shine, she needs to be built. Uh, she needs heroes to build around her, like Eren, Scarlet, or Helma, or Buckley. And let's check out her overall stats that I have uh, built for her. So she has at least one ascension, which allows her to reach around about close to five thousand damage or uh, five thousand attack. So she currently has four thousand seven hundred attack, hundred percent critical rate, two hundred fifty three percent critical damage, fifty two point five percent focus, and hundred eighty nine speed. So she needs focus stats to apply the bleed debuff, which is really important. And the cool thing is she has a leader ability to allow her to have an additional 30% focus to apply those uh, bleed debuff in dungeon battles only. This uh this does not uh I think this this one does not uh use uh it's not very useful for the guild battles because dungeon battles aura does not apply for guild battles like guild versus environment or the uh, guild boss banker. Alright, so let's check out the gears I have for her. So currently I'm gearing her uh, Martome in an assassin set, which is a, a 4-piece set that allows her to deal 50% more damage to the main target. 
and have a 50% chance to deal even a 35% more damage. So this one is really popular among joint attackers like Opal, uh, uh, Mara Shadow Blood, Arendelle, and also Martobe here. Then Radar Set is a good pairing for her to, add, to boost up her speed for an additional 50 speed if you do not have the mastery. Uh, not must read the ascension i think on the fourth or on the third ascension 15 speed so once you get this uh third ascension then you can swap out maybe swap out the uh radar set with a warrior set for additional attack stats once you're able to uh, move before the enemies all right so let's say assuming that you're not able to farm ecstasy set then you can swap out with a curse set curse set can be farmed from the queen of tides to allow her to have an additional 30 percent chance to apply the bleed through her basic ability you can use curse set or you can also use a warrior set or like double warrior set or curse set with a warrior set or curse set with a raider set so let's check out the st uh, stats as well as the secondary stats on each equipment starting off with the weapon so i have the attack health critical damage and critical uh, cr uh, speed next i have the helmet with a critical rate critical damage precision and defense ideally this defense percentage should be attack percentage and precision should be focus stats. Next is the armor. We have some focus, critical rate, defense percentage, and attack percentage. Ideally, this defense percentage should be critical damage. Then we have a speed boot with some flat stats attack. Ideally, this one should be focus. Then we have the three main stats for that is useful for attacker: attack percentage, critical damage, and critical rate. Then we have a critical rate ring. Once you fully uh, book up with the mastery books. You can swap out with an attack percentage ring or a critical damage ring depending on which gears that are available on you but it's recommended to get the attack percentage because this one will boost up her bleed uh, debuff uh, damage and last but not least we have the radar necklace that has a uh, attack percentage this has really good triple roll and critical rate critical damage but the other two stats is not really good agility and health ideally you want the, to have the speed uh, substats as well as focus then for the relics, they are not uh, uh, upgraded. It's just attack percentage on the crest and critical damage on the grail. Ideally, this one should be attack percentage as well. Then her glyphs and abilities are all maxed out. For her ascension, I just got uh, one copy for her to boost up the attack stats. And ideally, you want to get to the fifth ascension to benefit from this 100% launch or join attack, which makes her really good in the guild boss as well as the uh, guild versus environment so these are the two places that i can see that she uh, should be useful for her masteries ideally you want to go for all of her uh, abilities here uh, ultimately you want to have this enhanced ability fatal whip to apply additional stack of uh, uh, bleed then we have this game mastery effect this one is always useful for all heroes in the game for physics you just want to get this critical damage but if you want to make her more survivable then health and defense will be beneficial especially against the higher stages or high difficulties of the Q versus environment Alright, so that's basically uh, Martome build so let me showcase her in the guild boss because this is the area where she can shine the most because you can pair up uh, pair her up with other heroes other bleed heroes to do even more damage and I think she will pair well with other heroes such as like uh, let me find the heroes basically those two dark heroes such as like Abaddon because Abaddon is able to deal damage based on the number of uh, negative effects stacked on the enemy so if you were to look at his trait so Reaper attack attacks reduces all cooldowns by one turn per unique negative effect on the target and inflict 10% damage per negative effect so once you ascend him, he'll be able to do 50% damage per negative effect. Okay, and then we also have another elite hero who has some similar mechanic as Abaddon. I think it's her ultimate. Uh, so this uh, Raven ultimate ability, Dark Arrow Storm, deals 150% damage to an enemy, plus 50% bonus damage for every negative effect on the enemy. So the more blitz you can stack on the Guild Boss or the bosses in the Guild versus environment then Raven also can do massive amount of damage alright so let's see them in action in the banker so let me show you the team so I have okay let's swap out with uh, 
So this is a theme that I recommend you guys use you guys to use. So we have the leader in uh, Abaddon in the leader spot that provides addition 20% attack which synergizes really well with uh, bleed heroes because bleed heroes deals damage through their bleeds and bleed damage skills based on their attack stats. And then I have Scarlet to pair with Matome and then Eren is to trigger all of these basic abilities especially for Abaddon to apply the speed down, attack down, defense down and so forth. And also allowing our Scarlet as well as Martome to apply more bleeds to the enemy. For the spells, I'll be using Sarai Purgatory as well as Guys Renewal for supplementary healing because there's no healer in this team. Right, so let's see this team in action. So at the start of the battle, I speed two Scarlet to go first to apply one stack of uh, bleed. So whenever the enemy have uh, this bleed, uh, then when your heroes attack this hero, uh, enemy that has bleed, then her wolf will be able to perform a joint attack. Then when Eren has a max rage, then he'll be able to cast his, his trait will trigger another ultimate ability, Elijah attack. So that all of these heroes will apply even more bleeds. As you notice, uh, when Eren has max rage, then he'll automatically trigger the ultimate ability to allow everyone to perform a joint attack. And this joint attack allows you to ramp up a bleed debuff quickly from 0 to 25 within like 2 rounds itself and when there's a lot of uh, debuff on the enemies right as you notice Abaddon ultimate ability can do massive amount of damage to the guild boss itself so that is around about like 30k per hit so there are 4 hits that is around about 120,000 per round from Abaddon itself Okay, so as usual, Scarlet will always apply one debuff, which uh, triggers Eren ability to trigger his ultimate, and everyone will be able to join attack. This of my heals are pretty fast, allowing ultimate to always go two turns per round, apply even more bleed uh, debuff on the enemies here. Ideally, you want to have Abaddon to get the two rounds because he'll be able to uh, dish out even more even more damage with his ultimate ability. Okay, while well that is like 40,000 per hit, around 160,000 from his basic ability there. But since this is a showcase of Martomi, then we'll be able to see how much damage she can deal with her ultimate. So currently, her ultimate is under like two turns here. If I have like Eren at A5 Ascension, right? Then I'll be able to cool down all of these abilities even more quickly. So we are on the sixth round and we have reached 4 million damage here. Okay. So on the seventh round, we'll be able to see uh, Martome ultimate ability. Let's see how much damage she can deal with like 4 stacks of her bleeds here. Or maybe last 29 now. Okay. So let's ramp up the blitz again. Let's put this on Venomut to see how much damage Artomi can deal. Oops, she already uses her ultimate so fast. I didn't get to see it. <laughs> okay. Maybe on the eighth round, then we'll be able to see Martomi's ultimate ability damage. Oh no, the boss has already reached max rage here. Okay, let's see how much damage my ultimate, ultimate ability can do with uh, 28 stacks of bleeds. Oh, about 53 plus 18, plus another 53, 18, around about 60,000 damage. I think once you uh, once you have her, her fully mastery, maybe she will be able to do close to 100,000 damage with her ultimate ability there. Alright, so let's retreat. Let's see how much damage she does from the battle report. So look at that. Abaddon has, uh, deals around about 3.8 million damage, followed by Martome at 1.2 million. Then third would be Scarlet at 4,000 and then Eren at 250,000. So the damage is around about like 
Oh, that's pretty far. So as you can see here, right, from this battle report, she seems to be like, uh, it plays the role of like Bachelet, where she can apply lots of uh, bleeds, but she doesn't really do much damage. So you need another damage dealer to assist with the damage like Abaddon. Or you can swap out uh, Abaddon with Raven if you have, if you do not have Abaddon to do more damage to these enemies. But uh, Raven pairs really well with Eren if you are able to get him to A5 so that she can quickly cycle down her abilities. And yeah, I think... I think with uh, if I Eren, then Martomi will be able to apply more Blitz as well. Hmm, okay. Then these are the damage taken, which are evenly distributed. These are the healing dealt. Abaddon has a special ability to heal himself. Uh, Scarlet on the other hand, casts the guy's renewal. So these are the healing that she deals to her allies. So let's calculate. So it's around about... 5, 5 million 5.6 million damage once you book these heroes right i can potentially see around about 6 to 7 million damage which is which is pretty a lot from this uh team a alone before i end my video let me showcase martome in a no man's land dungeon like the flame lizard where she might be useful in speed farming this dungeon so for this uh team i'll be using martome Scarlet, Alma, as well as Eren. If you do not have Eren, you can swap out with another hero that can apply bleed like Barclay. Then for the spells, I have Smoothing Flames as well as Sundering Purgatory. So let's see this team in action. Alright, so at the start of the battle, we have a lot of joint attacks from Eren when he performs his ultimate ability or when you apply lots of bleeds that max out his rage meter here. If you don't have Eren, you can swap out with a synthesizable, synthesizable hero like Sarah to, sp to speed up this uh, turn even faster. So, alright, Eren uh, triggers his ultimate, which uses up all of his rage. So now we are trying to apply lots of bleeds to trigger another joint attack from Eren here. Oops, I think <laughs> the flame lizard took too much damage. So assuming if the flame lizard wasn't able, uh, if the flame lizard is able to tank the damage right, then you can see another joint attack from Eren to clear up these enemies here. So after this battle, I'll be showing you another hero that you can swap out, uh, Eren, and the hero is uh, Ciara. Alright, so let's see another battle of this flame lizard. So this is. Eren is super useful here, especially when paired with heroes who can apply lots of uh, bleeds on their basic ability. Alright, so this is super fast team. Uh, let me show you another team composition. Okay, let me swap out Eren with Ciara to, sp to speed up the run even faster for the first uh, run for the when, when dealing with the mobs. So Ciara is pretty useful here to nuke out with uh, AE trait. To clear out all these mobs so you don't need to waste too much time in the first round. Then yep, you managed to apply lots of bleed through the through the first three attacks here. But this one is really RNG when you do not have uh when you do not have what's this called Matomi at the A5 ascension because her joint attacks is currently at 50%. If she doesn't proc her joint attacks right then it may be slower. Lower as in not being able to reach the minimum of 6 stacks of bleeds on the boss. Okay, this is the second attempt on this flame lizard. But so notice she did not perform the joint attack. So that's why you did not manage to apply more bleeds here. So once you get to the A5 ascension, then it will be a more guaranteed run. So let's showcase Martobe in the light tower. Alright, so we're now in the light tower and what makes this light tower boss much more difficult in comparison to the other towers is because he has this ability which is available on stage 10 and, and 11. Body of light removes all negative effects from this character and grants a random stats up bonus for 3 tests at the start of each round. So if you're not able to nuke down the boss within the first round, right, then all of those bleeds will be expired or removed. So that's where Eren comes in. Eren pairs really well with these bleed heroes. 
And I'll be using the same team, same heroes, as well as the same spells for the light tower here. So let's see this team in action. Alright, so if you have Sarah here, then we'll be able to nuke down this Mary quickly. But I think Eren is, is really uh, really important to use him here to get at least 6 stacks of uh, bleed on the boss. So right now the boss did not have any speed up buff placed on himself. He if he does right, then you need to have all your heroes think around about 180 speed and above so that he does not cut you in. So Helmer has a bit ability similar to Martome and Mikasa where he can deal massive amount of damage through his ultimate ability to nuke down the enemy based on the number of stacks the number of bleed stacks on the enemy. As you saw right, Helmer and as well as Martome did the, the, the same thing, nuke down the enemy. So Helmer did around about 54,000 damage, which seems like pretty low. And this one is around, uh, Martome dealt around about 37,000 damage. Let's see the damage taken, no damage taken because we nuked down the boss within the first round itself. Alright, so here is the second run because maybe the first run is too fast. Maybe I'll need to slow it down a bit more. So that you guys can see how this team works. I'll put on one time speed on the boss wave to see how this team plays. Right, so battle speed is one. Okay, Scarlet applies blade. Then Aaron comes in with the joint attack. He triggers his ultimate. So as you notice, all the heroes apply lots of blade. And once it up gains more uh, rage here, right? I can apply more blitz through Aaron's trait here. So, so far this helmet as well as Otome wasn't able to nuke down this boss with the ultimate abilities, but I think the ignite, uh, the bleed debuff damage will just nuke down the boss here. So that's why you need to have your heroes with high attack stats so that your uh, bleed de uh, debuff will deal massive amount of damage to this uh, enemy. Check out the battle report. So this time, both Helma and Mortorme dealt roughly the same amount of damage, around about in the midst of uh, 40 to 50,000 damage. Well, it's around about 30,000, and last uh, last would be Eren at around about 7,000 damage. Alright, so that's the end of my video showcasing Mortorme in the cube boss. Basically, she's something similar to Bachelet. A not really good hero for arcade dominated dungeon and speed farming team but she's mainly used for long battles like guild boss banker or the guild versus environment if you're able to pair her with another hero who can do massive amount of damage based on the number of negative effects on them such as like raven and abaddon and in order for uh for martome to shine she needs to pair with another bleed hero we can apply lots of bleed, maybe like Barclay, Scarlet, and if you have another hero, support hero like Eren, to perform the joint attacks, then she'll be able to ramp up the bleed uh, debuff even faster. The best uh, combination would be like Eren, Artome, Scarlet, as well as uh, uh, Abaddon. Abaddon, Artome, Scarlet, as well as Eren, these four heroes. If let's say if you do not have Eren, then you can swap out with another hero, which is much more difficult to get. And the hero is, I think, Evelyn First Dawn, who can provide additional bonus turn to your heroes to perform more of their abilities. Alright, so that's it for my video. Hopefully, you, you learned a thing or two. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, you can click on the subscribe button as well as ringing the notification bell to stay up to date whenever I upload a new video on this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.